Hey everybody, welcome back to Active Self Protection Extra here again at uh, AJ Zito's shop in Prescott. And um, I have a fun one today. <laughs> I want to ask the gunsmith, the master gunsmith, uh, here's this thing. We've been, we're going to be working on my P30. It is un dirty omeso. Um, and I want to ask the gunsmith, uh, do I need to clean this gun and when do I lube this gun? Today's video is brought to you thanks to Magtech Ammunition, the official ammunition supplier for all range activities of active self-protection. So, <laughs> I know the internet always gets mad at me because this gun is that dirty and I run it that dirty all the time. It's probably been, I don't know, six or 7,000 rounds since I cleaned this gun somewhere in that ballpark. But I mean, I shoot a lot. Yeah. I mean, I probably run uh, 1,500 rounds a month through this gun. Even in the time of ammo shortage, I'm running probably a thousand rounds a month through it because I'm shooting videos and sure. you know teaching students and all those things. Um, we can look at, this is the upper, uh, that's the slide for that and you can see again. Um, now AJ, you look at this, uh, sure. they've looked at it. Uh, what do you think? You think that's uh, filthy, how dare I? <laughs> no, um, and this is probably a bad thing as a gunsmith to admit, but I just keep shooting this thing, throw some lube on it and keep going. Uh, but that's me. When do you say a gun needs more lube? Okay, so here's here's the dirty secret, and you might you the dirty <laughs> secret, <laughs> right? <But I'm> <laughs> <laughs> I got them all day. Uh, the big the biggest thing about it is, guns will absolutely run dirty. A a properly built gun will run dirty. <laughs> it will not run dry. That's just it's like your car. Yes, exactly. Lubed, exactly. fine. Dirty, uh, fine. Uh, unlubed. Not fine. Yep, exactly. Uh, now it's, this a, it's is... a mechanical. It's a machine. Yeah. That's all it is. Show me a machine that runs metal on metal contact that doesn't require lubrication. So this frame is Neil's mm -hmm. VP9, and one of the things that uh, AJ pointed out, you can see there on the frame rails uh, and on the rear rails, you can see that there is uh, shiny. See the shiny back here? You can see shiny here and shiny here. And you looked at that and went, mm, time for lube. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so here's the big thing about any of these, if Filthy I may. gun, too. Yeah. yeah, it's fine. The big thing about any of these shiny points is you can tell these rails at the beginning were black, right? Yeah, right. So at some point, metal on metal contact, which occurs because the slide runs on these tracks, right? There's yep. the slide. Mm, dirty, <laughs> filthy. But this is just an indication of metal on metal contact. And really what it's doing is it's, the gun is telling you exactly where it needs lubrication. Oh look, metal touches metal here and it wears. Put lubrication there. Put a little bit of lube on yeah. that. And honestly, we got know, jokes, there's always time for lube. <laughs> a little lube always helps. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> but that's the biggest thing, right? And uh, Neil and I were literally just talking about this. This whole idea of over lubrication of a gun. Um, over lubrication only matters with environmentals. Right. Okay. Uh, if we are sitting in my shop in the middle of Prescott, I can dump my entire bottle on this gun, entire bottle of lube on this gun, and it will not matter sure. at all. Will not matter. Might be a little stinky first couple times you shoot it. it might shoot lube all over sure. the place, you know. And It'll be mess. messy. Yeah. It'll be messy, no doubt. Yeah but it's not gonna hurt the gun. Mm. What's going to hurt the gun is the environmentals. If you are in environments that are extremely dusty, maybe- Like Phoenix. Exactly. Something with that real talcum powder type moon mm. dust kind of stuff. Yeah, then over lubrication becomes a thing. Because that moon dust gets entrained in the lube and now you have sandpaper. Exactly, right? We would refer to it as a uh, lapping compound. A lapping, oh, see right? he's a gunsmith. I know. I'm just- Technical term. Technical term. Don't use lapping compound. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but, that's, but that's the reality. It turns itself into uh, its own lapping compound. Now, I will say this, just so everyone's like, oh no, that's, that's not true. This is what happens, right? Carbon can do the same thing. The problem is carbon is much, much lighter than uh, silicon carbide or metal rocks, shavings, or metal something. shavings, anything like that, right? So are you prematurely wearing your gun by not cleaning it? Sure but by how many rounds, by well, how long. And he's off camera, mm -hmm. but how many rounds would you say you have through this frame? 40,000. Yeah, it's probably a 40,000 round yeah. frame. And guess what? It runs like a top. Yeah. So sure, wear your frame out with, with friction. I dare you to do it. You'll be a <laughs> heck of a shooter. 
Um, so I know people are going to ask, um, mm -hmm. uh, should I use squeezed frogs or uh, vegetable oils or right. what should I use? Uh, what's your favorite lube? Yeah. Okay. So here's the deal. My favorite of all the lubrications I've tried is going to be Slip 2000's brand of products, okay. especially their Extreme Weapons Lube, or, or now they have a new type. Um, but any of the Slip 2000s, because of the way they're based and their viscosity, I really in, enjoy, and they they seem to work the best of all the lubrications I've tried. But the reality is, there are tons of great lubrications out there. I will tell you this. I will not use the froggy juice stuff. No squeeze frogs because no. it's uh, organic based. Exactly. And, and when it gets cold and you live in Prescott, it gets cold. It does get cold. <clears throat> uh, I, I am not a fan of it, nor am I a fan of the Crisco. So the, the problem- We're being nice and trying not to have uh, angry owners threaten us with libel suits. Yeah. Squeeze frogs and other vegetable based component products Any, probably uh, should be avoided if you live in a cold environment. Yeah, and well, and not only that, long-term storage we've seen mm. has been a real problem. Because there's water in it. There, there's water in it and it will it will rust your gun. It absolutely will as it breaks down, as it, as it breaks down over time, as it sits in your safe, that's going to eat the steel on your gun. Mm. It's going to oxidize and then we're gonna have problems. And then you're gonna contact me to get all to this rust gun. out of your gun or get parts out of your gun. So generally speaking, a petroleum-based product is yeah. what you're going to say. Yeah. I, petroleum used, or Teflon-based, either one. Uh, I've used the Slip 2000 stuff. It's great. great. I've used Lucas Oil. Great. Great. I've used the AMS Oil stuff successfully. They publish their test data. Mm -hmm. um, works good. I mean, it all, you know, a, a petroleum or uh, silicon-based lube, yeah. great. Um, so you would just put a couple dabs on these wear parts? Yeah, absolutely. So any, any place we're going to see, especially back here, you can see the shiny, the shiny, uh, I'm just going to throw honestly, shiny around the filthy. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to take, this is a bottle. I just keep on my, on my bench all the time and I'll just throw, throw a little there, throw a little there, give a wipe, give a wipe. And this is a carry gun. So I'm not too worried about, uh, it's not a safe queen. Right. So I'll just throw some on there. A little on the side, maybe. Yep. And then I'll just kind of look inside and see, I eh, drop some lube there. This guy rubs. Yeah. That's it. Ta-da! Maintain for another few hundred rounds. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, here's the big thing. I would really, really, really suggest you not use any type of grease in your guns. Tell me why. It's essentially lapping compound. That's that's what it is. Uh, grease, especially, you know, why did guys stop using grease in the first place? It freezes in cold environments, right? Oh, but we created this new grease. What's the purpose of grease? It's so you don't get oil stains on your pants. That's about it. That's in my opinion. Okay. It, it, it keeps it keeps the the lubrication in property in the exact same spot. Hmm. The problem is over time, if you if you really want to do that, it's going to start gumming up with carbon. Now now we have a carbon issue hmm. with running a dirty gun with a grease because you are creating a lapping compound. But any of the oils out there are going to be absolutely fine and they are what I would suggest. Now, I know some people are, you know, they just don't like a dirty gun. They just go, you know what? I depend my life on it and so I want it to be clean all the time. So every time they go take a shooting, they clean it. Do you see a problem sure. with that? Um, in, in theory, there's no problem with that, right? A uh, clean gun is great. I mean, coming from the military, I can tell you 100%, there yeah. is very much such a thing as overcleaning your gun. And that was, dude, they want to make, you know, Marine privates freaking give them something to do. Here, clean your rifle and know it in all of its intimate details. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be spotless in the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and they're constantly right. doing this stuff. I, I feel like that's just military busy work. <laughs> it, it really is. And honestly, I have seen people destroy service weapons because they overclean them. And by that, I mean, they are literally taking off the protective finishes, yeah. you know, uh, any of the, the outer uh, phosphates or uh, parkerizing or any type of military grade mm. uh, coating that's been put on the gun. And they are taking them off in the name of cleaning, ah! which is absolutely ridiculous. You are doing nothing but hurting that gun. Guns do not need to be cleaned as much as 
some would tell you. As much as the military done taught us. <laughs> yeah. uh, and and listen, man, I just made hot water the hard way in Uncle Sam's Canoe Club, right? So, uh, but did we clean a bunch of stuff that didn't need to be cleaned just for the sake of, of having something for junior enlisted people to do? Sure. Yes, we did. Um, would I understand? I, I you know talked to a guy like Chuck Pressburg who mm -hmm. was over in Iraq, and you know those guys that are running grease or lube on guns in the deserts sure. of Iraq, they'd come home from uh, you know a patrol during the day. Yep, you got to clean that stuff off there because otherwise you get lapping compound and it beats it, your rifle. Absolutely. Up. But and that's a that's a perfect application of something like that, right? I put it on my gun. I go out. I do my thing. I come back. I take it off my gun. Mm. I reapply. It's the reason that Chuck ran an HK416 though, because yeah. it would run dry. Yeah. And he'd keep a little bottle of lube in his pocket. <laughs> that he said if, this was. You could hear him tell the story that he said if you know if they had to go. A lot of times they go. They they'd assault a structure. No shots fired. He'd come home. They'd all go clean their guns, and he'd throw his in the corner and go to chow. Mm -hmm. uh, if he had to fire a couple of rounds, no big deal. He said if he got through the end of his first magazine when he went to reload he put a couple drops of lube in the bolt <laughs> and he's like oh we're in a gunfight now oh okay then <laughs> that sounds kind of i don't know sfod top tier stuff for me but you know again so that's a thing guys so lube your guns all right make sure that they are properly lubricated great way and i think that's just a, a really great tip the place that you see metal on metal uh after shooting it lubricate and uh, keep that lubed. I, I like to lube my gun about every 500 rounds. Pull it apart, just see, is there is it dry? And if it is, hit these wear spots and put a little bit of lube on it and put it back together and keep shooting it. Uh, clean it whenever you feel like it, but don't be obsessive about it. I just, I, I clean it when it starts getting, feeling crunchy. Sure. And uh, I also have the record uh, officially when I, I had a VP9 that at about 18, 19,000 rounds started, the trigger started feeling crunchy. I sent it back to HK. And they, they called me and yelled at me. They're like, dude, this thing is like filled with belly button lint. Like, what the heck? And I was like, I don't know what to tell you. So it's the dirtiest gun they've ever seen full of belly button lint. But the gun's still shot, so whatever, you know. They literally took all the belly button lint out of it, cleaned it, uh, lubricated it, sent it back to me. Yeah, okay, there we go. I think they might have put a new transfer bar in it just to make me feel better about life, but whatever. Guys, this is a master gunsmith. He is telling you what's up. Listen to him. Thanks, bro. You bet.